So we're going up here, or I'm going up here. They're riding the chairlifts. I'm hopefully the rain's gonna hold off. It's pretty cloudy out. I can see it raining. It looks like over in Rye Cove. Um but like the main thing, the cool thing that I want to come to is they've got the block house open. I've never been inside of it. I want to go check it out. So I'm going to try to get up here and get some footage of that. They, the requirement that they, that you do wear a mask, a penny inside my mask. That's unsanitary. But, um, I'm going to go up here and check this out and see how it goes. We did get some of the, some of the stickers. Got that one. Then Natural Tunnel State Park. And then this year, let's see. Is this, yeah, 50 years Natural Tunnel State Park. So it's pretty cool. We got another one. I like this one. It's got the tunnel on it there, or the little spur, but. I thought that was pretty cool. This, of course, is a replica of the Anderson Block House built by John Anderson in about 1775. Uh, this replica was built by the uh, Daniel Boone Wilderness Trail Association uh, approximately 2005, 2005, 15, 16 years ago, or something like that. And it really commemorates uh, the Anderson Block House, which was located on the Holston River just north of what's now Kingsport, Tennessee. Uh, it was in Carter's Valley uh, on the Holston, and John Anderson and his wife, Rebecca Maxwell Anderson, who had just married in January 1775, uh, moved into the blockhouse sometime, we think, we think, we don't have documentation, sometime in 1775. We know when they got married pretty well, but we're not sure when he finished the blockhouse. So, anyway, uh, he was out, the Andersons were basically out on the edge of the Holston frontier at that time. Of course, you had settlements as far down as uh, Martin Station in Lower Lee County on this side of Cumberland Gap. Right, I've been uh, there. You had settlements here in Rico, which is right next door to us on the Right. You had, you had Russell County. William Russell was yes. finally the, uh, I don't know, what would you say, county lieutenant maybe. is That's a word you heard a lot back at that time, county lieutenant. He mm -hmm. sort of ran things in Russell County as far as public activities, militia, what have you. Uh, but uh, and the Andersons, again, were right as far down as the host, and it's just about anybody. Right. Uh, now, the reason 1775 is important, of course, uh, in March 1775, Richard Henderson, a North Carolinian, uh, he was a judge in North Carolina, and he headed up a group of investors, land investors, called the Transylvania Company. Uh, they came to a treaty with the Overhill Cherokee, which is uh, ones up in up in Upper East, uh, Northeast Tennessee, not the guys down on the other side of the Smokies. Right, right. Uh, so you know, led by what several chiefs, including the Conestota, uh, let's say the Little Carpenter, uh, now I can't think of the other guy's name, but anyway, the chiefs and the Henderson party uh, treated and, uh, and uh, the Henderson ended up with uh, most of what's now Kentucky, uh, okay, they 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 basically treated or traded for treated for uh, eighteen million acres between the Cumberland River or the Kentucky River, I should say, which flows due north from the backside of the Cumberland Mountains over here up to the Ohio River and the Cumberland River, which has headwaters near the Kentucky River, actually, okay, right here in the mountains. And of course, the Cumberland flows southwest right. into what's now Tennessee, mm -hmm. near what's now Nashville, and then back up and into the Ohio. So that's that's a lot of land. Okay? That is a whole lot of land. That's everything of Kentucky except the little sliver on the eastern. Well, not a sliver, but right. the eastern end of Kentucky. Right. Um, Henderson and his group traded like six wagon loads of goods which uh, the chiefs, or Conestota, I think, represented the chiefs. This is, this deal was uh, sometime in the works. So Conestota went down to North Carolina in 1774 and checked out the goods and said, okay, we, we probably will agree to, the, to this trade, yeah. this treaty. So Henderson and his people came up uh, in March 1775 to Sycamore Shoals 
which is near what's now Elizabethan. Okay. And um, there had like 1,200 natives, 1,200 Cherokee men, women, children, warriors, what have you. Yeah. Bunch of, bunch of settlers. <laughs> yeah. Like Daniel Boone, you know, yeah. all these area people who were interested in the deal, or yeah. what have you. Came uh, in. They, it is basically like a carnival, I guess. Right, okay. coming into the so area. You got, you got thousands of people down here, and they, they stay about a week or what have you. And I, my speculation, I'll tell you it's my speculation, I feel like the uh, Cherokees just felt like we're going to get this stuff because, you know, they, they, they were supposed to, and they probably did. They distributed it to all the people. So everybody said, you know, yeah. no way for anybody's going to go. They're yeah. giving free stuff. They're giving food. They're giving corn. They're giving rum. They're giving water. Yeah, they're yeah. yeah. You know, good, good, uh, they're good stuff. They're giving trinkets. Uh, they estimated about a million dollars in today's value. Oh, wow. Of, I mean, it wasn't cheap stuff. Right. It cheap. Right. But, uh, you know, it's not worth 18 million acres either. Right, so, right. Anyway, uh, people came. Uh, apparently, the Cherokee got their goods, and uh, some were not very happy. Uh, one warrior was heard to say that uh, he got a shirt, and he could have done better than that on one day of hunting deer. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay, so, he said, I don't have yeah. a shirt. I mean, <laughs> what good is that going to do? Yeah. And the Cherokee basically agreed, as uh, I think a Conestota again put it, that uh, they, Henderson told him, you will never again catch a crawfish in these streams or kill a deer. Mm. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So Kentucky... Nobody really lived in Kentucky. There had been a few, maybe a few Cherokee settlements, yeah, uh, some Shawnee settlements. What's now Kentucky was basically a hunting ground, right? And they depended on that for their their, their living, what have you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and you say you can't catch you can't catch crawfish anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, cut and dry. That short end of the deal. So, anyways. The Cherokee was dominant right here. Right here, okay. Uh, Sean and Lee were up along the Ohio River. Right. They, of course, a lot of these tribes, they, they were migrant. Uh, they, they moved around. Right. Uh, but Cherokee, uh, I'm sorry, the Shawnee sort of dominated the Ohio River, which is one reason you cannot come in that way and do a whole lot of settlement. I mean, all this is politics, basically. That's what it sounds uh, like, a little and, bit and more. The Cherokee, we're talking soon. about the Overhill Cherokee. Uh, they 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 held on to Long Island, which of course is now Kingsport. Right. And they later gave that up through trading during the Revolution, I believe. Okay. Okay. Because okay. they fought with the British during yeah. the Revolution, mm -hmm. basically a Western Front. The British enlisted these tribes to attack the sailors from the west, which they did. Right. And they pushed a lot of people out right. until after the war was over, and it became a little more uh, calm. Right. Um, but anyway, uh, Henderson makes this treaty, and uh, uh, he knew he knew Daniel Boone, of course. Right. So he hires Daniel Boone. I'm, I'm sure all this was done ahead of time. I mean, they 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 knew how to run their business. I'm sure. But as soon as uh, they reach this treaty in March 17, uh, March 17, 1775, uh, Boone. Takes off with like 30 axemen, 28 axemen, a uh, lot of them from the Clinch River. Right. Maybe some up in Russell County. I'm sure mm -hmm. they were. Michael Stoner is the name that comes to mind. Yeah. Um, uh, he starts out from the blockhouse, basically, and he starts blazing what we know as the Wilderness Road, or a long time it's called Boone's Trace. Right. Uh, of course, for thousands of years, it's been a warrior's <laughs> path. Yeah. All right. Or a buffalo trail. You know? mm, yeah. I mean, it had been there forever, basically. Yeah. But Boone and his men blazed the trail and maybe cleared up a little bit. Okay. You know, get the trees out of the way or something. And uh, Henderson gives Boone like 2,000 acres as payment. Okay. A lot of guys, a lot of war veterans, French and Indian war veterans, later Revolutionary War veterans. Yeah. They were paid in land grants. Okay. Okay. So it, it was basically just a huge Western movement, westward movement, I should say. Uh, so when Boone opens it up, yeah, uh, Henderson comes in right after him, and he sort of improves the road, as I understand it, and makes it passable to wagons. Right. And later, the state of Virginia, when they disallowed Henderson's uh, treaty, 
which is a whole other story, but they did not let right. him walk off with Kentucky. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. what's now Kentucky had been part of basically Virginians understood to be, to be right. part of their original charter. That's what I thought, uh, too, when you look back at some of the old charters depending, there. Depending on how ambitious you were in Virginia, went either to the Mississippi River or the Pacific Ocean. Right, and right. And included Ohio, Illinois, Kentucky, right. and all that stuff. The native tribes sort of, they found the English to be sort of look down your nose kind of people. Right. And tell you what to do kind of, we all know those kind of people in our own we lives. Do. We sure do. And the French were more, it seemed to me, you know, they would put yeah. themselves at, at the other guy's level. Right. Uh, from what I understand, the French tended to intermarry more than the English and the yes. other folks did. Uh-huh. So, yeah, it's probably too that uh, the natives did not like the English very much at all. Right. Uh, right. Of course, that politics again. They, yeah. they, they did uh, ally with the British when they got mad at sailors and wanted to push him out. So there right. you go. Uh, it's a funny little thing. Uh, the Shawnee had an understanding that I should say that Virginians were the least like people of all. <laughs> well, they really were. The Shawnee said, We will rob Pennsylvanians, but we kill Virginians. They had eight children, and they all live in the blockhouse. And they, much later, after all the Indian Wars were over, they built a farmhouse beside of that. Okay. Uh, over here on East Carter's Valley. Or right. East Carter's Valley. All that burned down in 1876. Uh, there is still a plaque there, or, or like a bronze plaque, I believe it is, mounted in stone. Uh, there's nothing there but an open field, so you can just stop by and look at the right. and check out where you think. I'm not real sure how the blockhouse was situated. I mean, there's no, right. no description or record of how it actually sat there, but you can imagine it probably up on this little high knoll. Of course, you know, you just have like an old bed here. And, uh, and you found a common, I don't know how many beds the Andersons would have had with all their children. Right. But uh, this is fairly typical for that day. Well, into the, I guess, even the 20th century, maybe. Uh, rope bed. Uh, Sleep tight, don't like the big boots by it. You got to tighten the rope sometimes. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that's where that kind of came from. That's yeah. kind of cool. So now, is it true about the portholes? Is that for attacks? Yes, that's, that's what it's for. You see, if, if you didn't have that, somebody might just slip up under your wall and they could attack you from there or slip in or what have you. So you could shoot down or pour down or whatever you wanted to do to drive them away. I do know they probably would not have had steps. They would have had just a ladder. It came straight up, you right? You pulled up if right. you were threatened or something. Right, that makes more sense. Yeah. You know. Sleeping rain and stuff like that, I really don't know. That's... That's pretty cool, though. I mean, another resource we had, and really they had to start making their own gunpowder mid 1770s, right? Uh, 1775. Uh, the British governor of Virginia, Lord Dunmore, cut off supply of ammunition, gunpowder, lead, what have you. Now, luckily out here, you did have some resources. You had, you could get the uh, sulfur you needed and charcoal, of course. Right. And saltpeter. Right, which was mined out of the tunnel, right? Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Right. okay. Okay, I didn't know if that was true or not, but... It's true, but I would say it's true because Tony Scales, who is actually a professional geologist, he wrote a book about the tunnel. To what Tony tells in his book, uh, they did try, during the Civil War, they tried to blast out saltpeter yeah. from the walls. I don't know how they got up there. That's <laughs> <It's laughs> high. Uh, I know. Hanging off the wall. But I, apparently you could still, I don't know, so you can see the scorch marks on the rock where they tried to blast yeah, it out. Yeah, so, yeah. he was pointing some of that out to me there yeah. uh, yesterday, but yeah. but that was... That. I, I would take Tony's word if he said it.